Hi, I'm Dr. Mel Wilcox from Orlando, where I'm a pancreatologist at Orlando Regional Medical Center. In this Mission Cure video, we will cover the following items today. What are pancreatitis flare-ups? What triggers these flare-ups? Their symptoms, treatment, how to manage remission, and learn a lot more. So first, what are pancreatitis flare-ups? Let's first discuss recurrent acute pancreatitis. Recurrent acute pancreatitis occurs when the pancreas becomes inflamed, worsening symptoms, especially pain. Patients experience periods of normalcy in between these acute attacks. Imaging tests during these attacks or flare-ups can show pancreatic inflammation which confirms the pancreatitis attack. Patients often recognize these flare-ups when pain comes back, similar to prior acute pancreatitis episodes. Now, with chronic pancreatitis, these flare-ups often involve worsening pain without visible inflammation on imaging. These episodes or flares develop gradually over time due to ongoing inflammation and scarring of the pancreas. Patients with chronic pancreatitis may struggle to tell the difference between flare-ups and an acute attack because these flare-ups could be just flares of pain without actual inflammation, which may mimic an acute attack. When the flare-ups are not too severe and the pain can be controlled, Patients can often manage these at home and do not need to go to the hospital. However, suppose the pain can't be controlled or there are symptoms that just won't go away like severe pain or vomiting. In that case, patients may need to go to the emergency room and perhaps even be hospitalized. Recurrent acute and chronic pancreatitis can result from a multitude of causes, including genetic factors, gallstones, medications, and habits like smoking and heavy alcohol consumption. In this video, we will focus on possible triggers for flare-ups in recurrent acute and chronic pancreatitis, and not the causes of pancreatitis. Unfortunately, researchers don't yet have all the information on what triggers these flare-ups. As we continue our research, we hope to better understand these triggers and their impact and improve on our ability to manage pancreatitis effectively. We know that the frequency and severity of flare-ups can vary significantly among people with pancreatitis which makes it much harder to identify specific triggers. We know that lifestyle factors like smoking and alcohol use may lead to recurrent attacks and damage the pancreas. But there are other possible triggers, oftentimes dietary, such as greasy, fried, and high-fat foods, as well as high-protein foods. Your pancreas works hard to process most of the fat and protein you consume. Eating a lot of fatty foods puts an extra strain on it. Other factors like lack of sleep or stress will require further research before we can say they are actually triggers. To effectively treat and manage flare-ups, we need to understand and address what is causing the symptoms, for example, ruling off gallstones that can dislodge and obstruct the bile duct, as well as elevated triglyceride levels in the blood. For patients with chronic pancreatitis, flare-ups may not always have clear triggers following initial episodes or injury to the pancreas. Although flare-ups in chronic pancreatitis typically involve pain without inflammation and can be less severe compared to perhaps attacks early on, such acute pancreatitis inflammation can occasionally occur alongside chronic pancreatitis, which may necessitate emergency treatment for symptom relief. Symptoms of pancreatic flare-ups can include abdominal pain, nausea, 
vomiting, back pain, and diarrhea. These can occur with or without elevated levels of pancreatic enzymes, specifically amylase and lipase, which are detected using blood tests. With chronic pancreatitis flare-ups, amylase and lipase levels are usually normal, and increased levels of these enzymes do not necessarily correlate with the severity of the attack. These flare-ups or episodes can significantly disrupt daily life, affecting energy levels, sleep, ability to work, social engagements, and travel plans. Their unpredictable nature adds to their disruptive impact as they can occur without warning. In recurrent acute pancreatitis, each flare-up may increase or intensify pancreatic inflammation, potentially worsening symptoms. Diagnostic tools like CT scan, MRI, or endoscopic ultrasound aid in assessing pancreatic damage and guiding suitable treatment options. In both recurrent acute and chronic pancreatitis patients, identifying and addressing underlying causes like gallstones or high triglyceride levels in the blood is crucial for effective management. These factors could have triggered the initial pancreatitis attack or developed later on, so identifying possibly missed causes and ruling out new onset issues becomes essential. Your healthcare provider will conduct blood tests, imaging, or endoscopic procedures as needed to assess these factors and recommend a suitable treatment plan. Let's next look at hospital management for these attacks. Severe pain and the inability to keep down fluids signals the need for hospitalization during a flare-up. In the hospital setting, intravenous pain medications and fluids are commonly used to manage severe pain during a pancreatic flare-up. After administering IV fluids, when patients can tolerate a liquid diet, they are given clear liquids followed by progression to a soft, low-fat diet as symptoms further improve. What about management at home? Monitoring pain levels and seeking medical attention if pain becomes unmanageable is essential. However, patients should have pain medications and anti-nausea medications at home to manage symptoms and avoid unnecessary emergency department visits if possible. While low-dose narcotics or prescription medications like Ultram can be effective, Availability may vary, and physicians may be hesitant to prescribe narcotics in the current climate. Acetaminophen or NSAIDs can also be used, but it's important to consult with your primary physician, gastroenterologist, or pain management specialist on what is the best option for you. Regarding dietary management during flare-ups, Switching to clear liquids and avoiding regular foods is recommended. Gradually transitioning to a soft, low-fat diet as symptoms improve and appetite returns is a sensible approach. Cognitive behavioral therapy and meditation techniques can complement prescribed pain management therapies and improve the overall quality of life for those with chronic pain. Additionally, seeking appropriate medical care for depression and anxiety is important for overall well-being as these conditions can exacerbate chronic pain symptoms. If you're feeling well without recurrent pancreatitis flare-ups, you should follow up with your health care provider annually to monitor for any change in symptoms, check your nutritional health, and prevent complications. You can review with your primary care provider periodically to keep a check on any other health care conditions. 
while the exact triggers of flare-ups are still unclear and may vary between patients, it's advisable to quit smoking and alcohol after a pancreatitis diagnosis to minimize the risk of further damage to the pancreas. Flare-ups can lead to increased scarring in the pancreas, so any changes in symptoms should be promptly reported to your healthcare provider. They may recommend additional tests such as blood tests, CT scan, or MRI to assess your condition and determine the best course of action for treatment. So in summary, flare-ups are painful and mostly unpredictable. And as a result, they can be disruptive. However, you can do things to manage them better, such as keeping suitable pain and anti-nausea medications on hand, modifying dietary intake and lifestyle factors, and seeking timely help from your treating doctor and healthcare facility to care for your health. Thank you for your time and attention. If you'd like to learn more about managing pancreatitis and related symptoms, please check out our other videos.